Hi everyone, I'm Mike, this is the Sunday Art Show, and this week we're going to be looking at the portraits for NHS Heroes movement. Now this movement was started by Oxford artist Thomas Croft. So after you've finished watching this video, please do me a favour, click on the link that I'll put in the description below the video, and go to check out Tom Croft's amazing artwork. So Tom's thought was that when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, early on this year of 2020. He thought, well, in centuries gone by, you know, and up until the present day, the main people that get celebrated by portrait painters are leading academics, you know, war heroes, leading industrialists, royalty, and so on. And he thought, well, at this difficult time, surely the real heroes of the, of the present day are the people who work for the NHS. So if you're not from the UK, the NHS is the National Health Service in the United Kingdom. So the staff there work tirelessly, often for little financial reward. And obviously, you know, it's a scary time. So he thought it would be a real, really nice thing to do if he, and he contacted artists all over the world by so, via social media and set up this movement where the artist would offer a free portrait painting to the first NHS key worker to get in touch. And the movement went global. So this is Tom's Instagram on screen now. Thousands of portraits were painted. The story was featured in the national press. It was featured in Artist and Illustrators magazine, you can see here. He even got into some kind of celebrity gossip magazines over here in the UK. So, so the story went beyond the traditional art publication. So, you know, absolutely fantastic idea for him to come up with that. Really, really cool. So as I say, please do check out his website. So I put uh, my message, you know, following Tom's guidance, you know, the, the guidelines he set up, he put it up out on Instagram. And the first person to contact me was the husband of a lady who worked as a frontline nurse in the COVID ward. This is just a little extract of her kind of detailing her heroic behaviour during the pandemic. Little extract of the email he sent me. So I thought, well, you know, who better to do a portrait of? So started out with a couple of preliminary sketches, pencil and pen, just very quick sketches from reference photos that were sent to me. And they approved the first one. They liked that pose the best. So I started out on my canvas, having put down a ground of yellow ochre, just with a watercolour marker pen, rapidly putting in, obviously this is speeded up footage, but I worked fairly quickly, but being careful with the likeness to put a loose drawing in. And you can see that having put that blue down, I then went back around in certain areas, correcting with a different colour. And that's a technique I often use because the second colour means you can, you know, you can just see where you made a mistake the first time. So having done that, um, I just cover up the ground colour, working pretty rapidly with a big flat brush, conventional acrylic paint and I put in a background colour. And at this stage, I emailed the painting to Hazel's husband and just so they could both look at it and say, you know, hey, you know, if this is going up on your wall in the end, are you happy with this background colour? Does this work with your home decor? And they said, yep, that's fine. So then once I heard back, I started working on the, the portrait itself. So still with conventional acrylic paint, I started blocking in the main areas. So this at the moment is just a mix of mostly titanium white little bit of cad red, a little bit of cad yellow, possibly a touch of blue. And really, I'm just filling in here to, to get away from that underground, underground? Get away from that uh, ground colour that I put down for the initial underpainting, that yellow ochre. But the mid-tone of the yellow ochre allows me to judge light and dark rather better. And that's why, even though I cover it up, it's worth doing. Having put that lighter colour down, I've now added more cad red, and more of the cad yellow. And you can see that's more of a mid-tone going on in the flesh. And then I start to introduce some just fairly subtle shadow colours by adding a bit more of the blue. So the marks I'm making here are fairly bold, fairly big, but the tonal variation isn't that great, so it still has a reasonably subtle effect. Next I move on to the hair. Similar treatment. Um, just blocking in the colour, but adding a few of the ringlets and spirals of hair that are falling down either side of the head as I go. 
but I'm being careful not to be too fiddly at this stage, not getting too detailed. If I can make a reasonably small mark with the large brush, then I will. But if I feel, oh, it's going to be a bit tricky, then I don't, I don't struggle with it too much at this stage. The point is just to establish a presence of the person on the canvas. A few little highlights, still fairly subtle, uh, on the hair. And then a slight time jump there, I started to put in a little bit of the dress. Uh, and now I've moved to a small round brush to block in the eyes and mouth. So by working in this way, what I'm doing is I'm working on all areas of the painting equally and bringing them to resolution, hopefully in a synchronised way. And that allows me to better judge what's going on in the painting as a whole. So, for example, if I just worked on the left eye and got that completely finished before I even touched the rest of the painting, then I might find that by the time I came to work on the dress, the eye looked wrong in relation to the eye. So, you know, I try to bring things, evolve them all at once, basically. And I'm obviously working from a reference photograph here because this was painted during lockdown, so there's no way I could have done a live sitting. Um, but I'm not looking to copy the photograph exactly. Obviously, the likeness has to be good. It has to be recognisable. Um, I want it to be a good painting to look at. I want there to be some life in the painting. But at the same time, I don't want to replicate. I don't want it to look like a photograph. I want it to look like a painting I've created. So I'm pushing the colour spectrum around a little bit. I'm adding my own style here and there. And while I've been chatting away, what I'm doing is I'm basically making little adjustments all over the painting as I move around. The marks I'm making are in general gradually getting smaller and smaller as the painting progresses. And I'm just looking very carefully at the subtle changes in tone and colour across the person's skin and just really making those little adjustments over and over and over again to gradually hone in on something that I'm going to be happy with. Now, when it comes to the dress, the fabric of the dress, I think it might be a ball gown. The, 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 the photo I've got only shows from you know, the shoulders up, but um, it's kind of a silvery fabric. So silvery fab fabrics can be quite a challenge, but the key to tackling them, if you ever want to give it a try, is just to look very closely at what colours actually are there as opposed to what you expect to be there. And again, it's not that you can't have a little bit of artistic licence, but you've got to start at that position. You've got to start by saying what is actually there and then what do I actually want to paint. So it's okay to make a conscious decision to make it different from the reference, but what you don't want to do is just make it different from the reference because you think that's what's there. Anyway, while I was talking about the dress, you can see I've moved to a smaller brush and I'm starting to add more detail to the eyes to begin to bring them to life. I also Put in a few smaller marks on the hair so where the fringe is going across the top of the eyes we need to um, have a convincing sense of hair and i'm making adjustments to the shape of the hair as well so when dealing with hair what you want to do really is block it in as if it's just a mass of stuff and then you can add the nice little bits of texture or the little bit of bits of frayed edges or little ringlets of hair that cascade down onto the shoulders all of those things are secondary to getting the general mass established. Now, when it comes to jewellery, things like the earrings, the way I treat that is to just put the shape in with a, with a mid-tone. And then having done that, what I'll do later is add some, add some shadow and highlights, as, as, I, as I just did on the right-hand ear. Now, because the person is smiling, we have to try and capture a smile which is convincing as a fleeting moment. And one of the ways to do that is to maintain a variation in the hardness or softness of edges we use. So, for example, if you're going to paint the individual teeth, then perhaps the teeth near the corners of the mouth will be less well defined than those in the centre of the mouth. Similarly, when we paint the lips, especially if there's lipstick, we want to avoid painting the lips as a single simple red colour. There will be variation in that colour of red. There will be variation in the highlights where the light is catching the lips in terms of both colour, shape and softness of edges. Now what I'm doing when I paint this as well, because this is a commission, I'm emailing 
Hazel and her husband to let them know what I'm up to so they can see the, the portrait progressing and, you know, just to make sure they're happy with the progress, really. Make sure it's going in the right direction, because the last thing you want to do, especially in this case where you're painting, you know, something for somebody who's, you know, working for the NHS, and, you know, in a, in a very difficult time, you don't want to create something that they're not happy with. So it's important that they get to see it as it progresses and they can see the general colour scheme and effects that I'm getting. Now, coming back to the hair. Now, when I paint these little ringlets in, that's a really good fun stage because having established the hair as a realistic thing on the head, I can have a bit of you know fun freestyling, basically, and just have the, the hair spiralling down here and there. Now, you don't want to go too crazy. You want a few flourishes, but, you know, it's a fun part of the painting to do. Similarly, I really enjoyed painting the dress because the fabric was so unusual and I enjoyed kind of painting that and kind of tweaking it a little bit, adding my own twist, but adding a few more blues and some enhanced blue outlines to the dress as well. The reason I went to paint, the reason I went for a canvas in terms of painting this is it's a wrapped canvas, which means the canvas wraps around the edges of the wooden stretcher. So that gives the, the sitter the option of they can just hang it on their wall if they want to, as it is unframed, or if they want to, it will take a frame. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility as well. And I should have mentioned that before starting to paint this, I kind of got approval of the size and the shape of the painting that I was going to do as well. So all of those things are kind of things we have to consider if we're if you're doing a commission. But basically, this is effectively a commission um, if you're painting something for somebody else rather than just for yourself. So as you can see, I've been chatting away more generally, but the time lapse has been moving ahead and I'm switching between the flat brush and the round brush and sometimes a flat rounded brush. Basically, just picking the size of the brush I feel is going to be the best for the size and shape of mark I need. And I'm just making little tweaks here and there. And at this stage in the painting, I'm still looking at my reference photo for sure, you know, making sure I'm keeping things accurate and not getting carried away and just sort of straying from the, the way the person, away from the person, I'm making sure that I'm not straying from the way the person looks, if that makes sense. So I'm definitely looking at my reference and trying to stay accurate, but at the same time, I'm trying to have a bit of fun as well and, you know, bring a, bring a little bit of artistic flair. So I signed it, as I always do, with my MJ. But in addition, I put the title of the painting and then just my full name and the date on the edge of the canvas there. Put a string on the back. And then I put the hashtag portraits for NHS heroes. And then I put thank you for all that you do. So I just thought it would be a nice little memento of yeah, this sort of historic time, really. Um, and there's the finished painting. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.